And so we're going to cross now to my aunt, talk to France 24's Andrew Hillier, who joins us from there. Andy, first of all, just start off by telling us what you're being um, told, I suppose, by people that you've spoken to there. Well, yeah, well, the first thing that we, we can say now is that, uh, yeah, there is a, a, a sense of calm, relatively speaking. But, you know, speaking to people uh, on the streets, it's clear that they're still basically uh, terrorized uh, by the events uh, over the last uh, four weeks. And, you know, because what happened, what, what began as uh, gang uh, violence with uh, youths from rival uh, poor uh, neighborhoods targeting each other has kind of escalated uh, into these random attacks on motorists where... Uh, masked youths are carrying machetes, uh, have, have been, in some cases, setting up uh, barricades uh, on the road and then attacking and robbing uh, motorists at random. We spoke to uh, a victim of one of those attacks uh, just yesterday, um, and he told us how while he was on his way to work to Mamudzu, which is the biggest town on the island, he, he was attacked and stabbed uh, at 530 in the morning. So, yeah, people really terrorized by the seeming, seemingly completely random nature of those attacks. And what's happened now is that uh, people's confidence in the ability of the state to protect them is being steadily eroded. And they're now taking matters into their own hands, as we found out in this report. Mayotte in the Indian Ocean is France's 101st department. It's been rocked by violence in recent weeks following the death of a 20-year-old man killed with a machete on the 12th of November in a slum area of the capital, Mamudzu. Gangland violence escalated over several days, prompting the deployment of riot police to the island. Local residents condemn the lawlessness, saying they've been abandoned by central government in Paris. France is a major power. How can it fail to govern a small island like Mayotte with a small population? The government so far has failed to quell the violence. Top French officials have visited Mayotte in recent months and have vowed to beef up security among a series of measures. The French president has acknowledged the scale of the problem. We must continue the serious work of reform in Mayotte. Our current rules have to change according to the reality on the ground. Mayotte has a population of 300,000 people. 17 out of 20 of them live below the poverty line, and 48% of them are foreign nationals. Some of the department's elected officials say illegal immigration is a cause of some of the recent violence. They want stiffer checks on migrants coming from the Comoros Islands, 70 kilometers away. The Comoros used to be part of France as well before declaring independence in the mid-1970s. It has suffered from decades of political instability. The current crisis in Mayotte is having broader repercussions in French politics, with the far-right National Rally Party saying this week that Macron's government should take back control to prevent the situation being exported to mainland France. Yeah, Andy's uh, team uh, and uh, that report there from Mayotte. Andy, just um, give us a little bit then of the context of these problems, can you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, to, to understand Mayotte, you really do have to place it uh, in its uh, wider context. Yeah, it is a, a French overseas department, thousands of kilometres away in the Indian Ocean, sandwiched between uh, Madagascar and uh, Mozambique. Historically, it's very unique. Uh, it used to be uh, part of uh, Comoros, uh, but then when those... Um, when Comoros gained its independence back in the 1970s, Mayotte uh, stayed a part of France and, France. and it was only officially brought in line with other French overseas departments in 2011. But it still feels very much cut off and different uh, from mainland France. That's because the poverty levels here are so high. It's something like 77% of people live under the poverty line. Uh, yesterday, uh, sorry, two days ago, uh, we were able to visit uh, one of those... Um, one of those towns where poverty levels are sky high, a slum called uh, Kaweni. And, uh, you know, you have to say that in 21st century, uh, 21st century France, uh, people call those slums home. So uh, there's also 30% unemployment. So, you know, uh, paradoxically, uh, what's happened here is that many people are saying that the decision to become a French overseas department in 2011 uh, may not have made things better, but indeed things may actually be getting worse. And the administration there is also highly complicated, isn't it, Andy? 
Yeah, that's right. I mean, officially, some 300,000 people live on this island, but the real figure is more like 600,000. So the big question for the state is how to absorb those huge numbers of people. Uh, many of those uh, people who, who live here unofficially are undocumented migrants from neighboring uh, Comoros. Uh, and the uh, budget uh, that the state has for uh, Mayotte is based on the official population figures, meaning there are huge shortfalls in things like education, health and infrastructure. Then there's also the problem of unaccompanied children. Many families, when they migrated here illegally, they were then, they brought their children, but then they were forcibly deported and they left their children here to fend for themselves, uh, which means that all of that creates a fertile breeding ground for violence, which is what you're seeing right now. Andy, thanks very much. Andrew Hillier uh, talking to us there from uh, Mayo. Good to have you on the programme uh, live from there today.